right, so we won't look too much on Saturday's game, but just in brief, is there stuff that you can learn from that game? Can you sometimes learn more in defeat than you do winning sometimes? I don't think I've learned anything after the game about the players, about the team, than I already knew before the game. Um, so no, I think sometimes that that can be the case. I, I know where you're coming from with that question, but I probably don't think I've learnt anything more than I already knew, if that makes sense. There's a lot of fatigue in Saturday. There was a lot of fatigue in it. And no matter how many times I look back at it and I see things that are unchar uncharacteristic of our lads in the game, sometimes you can't do anything about it, no matter, no matter what you want to do, you know. It was a big boxing match on Saturday night, wasn't there? When they probably get to 10, 11 and 12 rounds, don't matter what's in your head, it's whether you've got anything left. And um, you see it, you see it all the time. You see it in the athletics, all of a sudden, you know, when someone's tired and they're coming down that back straight, it's really, really difficult. And no matter how much training they've done, no matter how much work they've put into it, fatigue can take over. And um, as I said, you know, they made they made some good changes on Saturday, which they could do. I felt as though the team they picked against us was stronger than the team they picked in the away game against Burton on the Tuesday. And, um, you know, when you can bring them dynamics into the team, change your wing backs up, change your two tens up, change your striker up, it's massive. And um, it was a hard shift for our boys. It wasn't a 3-0 game. Um, it definitely wasn't a 3-0 game. I think that's what happens. I think we need to try and look beyond the result, really, because it wasn't a 3-0 game. I think if we'd have lost 1 or 2-0, I think that was probably about right. It wasn't a 3-0 game. Um, but we have, to, we have to lick our wounds from that because what we've got to do is come in and prepare again for Burnley tomorrow. Yeah, we've said previously, you know, it's been a tough opening opening fixtures for the league. But to the Cup tomorrow, against Burnley, against your old side, you know, you're looking forward to that game? Yeah, I mean, I look forward to seeing quite a few people um, in pre-season. You know, it's a great club. I had some great times there and um, I'll be looking forward to seeing them again. But um, we definitely have to change our team around for that one. And I know you'll want to win every game, the fans will want to win every game, but from an outside perspective, do you think there's less pressure on you tomorrow than there is in the league? Um, probably, but it, I don't... The pressure's the same anyway before a game, for me, you know, because I want to win it whoever we're playing. So I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it makes any, any difference, you know. If, um, if I was playing in a five-a-side out here with the lads, I'd want to win it. And yet, what, what divine right would I have to win it at 58 if I joined in with them? Probably none, but, you know, I'd want to win it. And like I say, tough games, but a team that were in the Premier League last season, yeah. it's going to be, be a good test for the players. Uh, there's lots of good tests that we have. You know, we had a good test on Saturday, didn't we? We had a good test on the Tuesday before that. We had a good test a week ago last Saturday. And we had a good test against Burnley in pre-season. So, you know, we, we understand where we are. We know what we are. Um, they're an honest group, the boys, and um, you know quite a few of them will have to go again tomorrow night. And you've got some, some good memories of your time at Burnley? Yeah, lots. Had nearly four years there. Building a team from nothing, really. Went in there, had eight players. Average age of about 31, 32. Um, ended up building a whole new team. Made them a good few million in the transfer market. Um, had some great cup wins, knocking Villa out of the cup, knocking Liverpool out of the cup. Um, so, yeah, great chairman, Barry Kilby. Loved him to death and his wife, Sonia. Fantastic people. Good memories, but you'd like to be the one giving it to them tomorrow. I don't know about giving it to them. You know, I'm not sure <laughs> I would say giving it to them is the right word. Look, like I said, we'd like to win every game we play in. And if there's a possibility of us winning tomorrow night, we'd be delighted with that. And we've said a draining couple of weeks, you know, fatigue setting in. So you said you're expecting to make some changes tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> no more than that.
Correct. <laughs> Danu Doe, I know he's one that you highlighted um, on Saturday, and I know you said there was a couple of others. Do you think that there'll be room for them to kind of move around tomorrow, maybe have a little bit of a break? Well, it might not be the break that Dan needs, might it? So, good follow-up question to your original question, which really means you're going to get nothing out of me. <laughs> good try, though. I like that one. Really good. <laughs> Got to give it a go. Correct. Well done. <laughs> no worries. Starting to get to know you now. <laughs> But um, we've, we've mentioned changes and you're not going to give away any more. But is there room, maybe, um, I've lost my train of thought now. You've thrown me off good. now. Yeah. Yeah. You've thrown me <laughs> off. That's good. <laughs> You've thrown me off on, now. You're right. Start yeah. again. You're right. Whatever you were going to say, <laughs> is no problem. Um, but, but making changes and, you know, you still want to win. And it can not just benefit on the pitch, but can benefit you off the pitch with the financial gains you can make from it as well. Yeah, I mean, we all know about the financial gains, don't we? You know, so, yeah, it's not something I think about when kickoff comes. I don't start thinking about, oh, you know, how many is in the crowd and times in it by how many. I don't, I don't think about that. But obviously, all the money that we get in the coffers helps um, without a shadow of a doubt. But, you know, tomorrow night gives me another opportunity to look at um, some players, some of the younger players, and some players in different positions because we're going to need that throughout the season. I've already had a little glimpse of a couple of things and um, and tomorrow night it'll be giving me another opportunity to do that. And you've had experience for obviously playing Liverpool, you've, you've made money out of doing that and how much can that help you? You know, we've still in the, got the transfer window still open, so how much can that extra income help? Huge. It can help. It can help. But it won't help fatigue in any of the boys if there is any, as we've just said. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know, once once fatigue sets in or whatever you've got, you just got to try and dig as much as you can. But you know that that won't necessarily help any of the fatigue. And by the way, you know, sometimes on a Tuesday night, it, it's funny because it's not so much a Saturday to Tuesday I worry about. It's when you've gone Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. It's the Saturdays where there seems to be a bit more of a kickback in performance whether that's because it's warmer um, I don't know but normally um, it's the Saturday it's the Saturday and and what doesn't help is when you play that Saturday if the team you've played um, has either made five or six changes or the team that you're going to play hasn't played midweek so there's lots of factors not not just the 90 minutes uh, and Ryan Bowman got 20 minutes on Saturday. Is he is he all right after that knock before? Yeah, no. It, well, he's all, it, there was no complaints after the game um, from him. He wasn't going to be going on for a long period of the game. Um, and that was probably enough considering he'd only done, you know, when we look at it, probably 30 minutes training on the Friday. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Steve, you mentioned on, on Saturday on Saturday after the game about the need to be better at turn, turnover. Yeah. Would you be able to elaborate a little bit on that for me, please? Yeah. So when we work hard and we press the ball and we get it, we've got to be better with it on turnover and, and get our composure pass off quicker. I speak to the lads about that a lot and we'll, we'll do that in certain sessions. And for me, we, we win the ball a lot. We win it a lot in games. But then when we win it, we don't keep it enough. So that's what I mean by turnover. And um, we, we know we've got to be better with that. That takes time to get into, you know, nine out of ten where your pressing points are going to be on the pitch. Who wins it and then who do they give it to? Because what happens when you've run around and you're pressing, the game's under a mile an hour for you. So when you win it sometimes, you've not got to be under a mile an hour. So I have a saying of play what you see when you see it. Because if I win it quick after running around and then I play you, you're more composed than me because I'm the one that's been running around to get it. That, if that simplifies it a little yeah, bit. That's, that's smashing. Um, and, and Tom Bailey seems to be growing in into a, into a town shirt game by game. How do you feel he's getting on? Um, I'm, I think that there's more to come from Tom and I think there's more to come from Jordan. I don't, I don't think they've settled in as quick. They've settled into the group. I just mean playing terms, you know, from those, from those guys, um, I, I want more. We'll get more. It's just taking time to get the more. So um, we need to see, 
we need to see where we are with it a little bit because sometimes you can't afford to have your two attacking midfield players quiet. And um, we're not we're not really um, penetrating teams enough at this moment in time. That's not just them, you know. That's yeah. that's all around the pitch. Um, so, yeah, we need to have a little look at that a little bit more. But I, I want, I want more from them. Um, and Elliot Bennett is he is he closer to be back in on the on the grass? Well, he's training? closer because probably last time we spoke was nearly, I don't know, when we spoke about him five, six, seven days ago, something like that. Really, yeah. he's closer, just not close enough. Yeah. Just not close enough. It's. You know, we're talking. You know, if you if you ask me that question, maybe in two weeks, then we'll say he's getting closer. Yeah. As long as the program goes on at the speed it's going on, it that the hard part after these operations are really the first month. Yeah. Because if you if if for instance it's a six week job. You've got two weeks probably of rest, you know, non-weight bearing, partial weight bearing, which are the real slow weeks. But 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 those weeks, certainly with Elliot, and the first ten days or so with Aidan, they're really slow. Yeah. They're really slow because you need the injury to heal before you can start working, yeah. working it again. So. You know, I mean, it's an absolute pain in the neck for me, but there's nothing I can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Um, we just have to be patient, and um, it's not a good trait of mine, like. But um, I don't expect that many managers have got good patience, especially when you're waiting for your squad to come together, because it makes it more difficult in the meantime. Um, but you know, we're still. Um, we're still looking, we're still speaking to people, as I've said, you know, we can probably, you know, look at trying to get um, one or two in before the, before the end of the window, but you're, you're in competition with a lot of people. Yeah. So, you know, it's not just as easy as I ring you up and say to you, can I have so-and-so, and you say, yeah, no problem. Because what happens is there's four or five other clubs down the line and, and you're all in that, in that race and that fight to try and sign those players.